Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael, you're watching IDB, and Apple has just released iOS 17.4 to all iPhones. In this video, I wanna show you everything that's new, so let's go ahead, roll the intro, and jump right in. So the first change is a pretty big one, and it only affects people in certain countries. So if you are a part of the European Union, which I believe has 27 countries, there is a pretty big change coming for your iPhone. So the first change is that you are now allowed to use another marketplace other than the App Store. So this is a pretty significant change and it's not something that we would expect from Apple. However, there were some new laws and legislations put into place and Apple is now required to allow people in the EU to have an alternate marketplace for their iPhone. So I guess that's good news if you live in one of those 27 countries, but for me, I am in Canada and a lot of other iPhone users aren't gonna get access to this feature. There are a bunch of other changes for the iPhone along with this new legislation in the EU. You are now able to have an alternate payment method inside of the App Store. You're also able to have a new default browser selection option right inside of Safari. This was previously found inside of settings. And when you're using a third-party web browser such as Chrome, for example, the app is now able to use an alternate web engine other than Apple's WebKit. And then the final change that's a part of the EU legislation is third-party wallet applications now have access to the NFC chip on your iPhone. All right, so that covers all of the changes that are for the EU. And now every feature I show you from here on out is going to be for every iPhone in every country. The first one is for podcasts. So we have a new option in podcasts called transcripts. Now it looks like the lyrics icon from Apple Music, but when you click on it, you can see we get a transcript of everything said in the podcast. And just like you can do with lyrics in Apple Music, you're able to scroll inside of podcasts and choose a specific part of that podcast that you wanna to listen to. On top of this, you can see we also have a search icon. And if you click on this, you're able to search for any part of the podcast you want. iOS 17.4 also introduces a brand new security measure for iMessage called PQ3. So PQ3 is a new post-quantum cryptographic protocol, which is going to secure your messages in the cloud. Pretty much how it works is iMessage already uses end-to-end -end encryption. However, end-to-end -end encryption uses advanced mathematical problems for security. And PQ3 introduces a new measure that can stop quantum computers from solving these problems. So normal computers aren't able to solve the problems that uh, end-to-end -end encryption uses, but quantum computers, which aren't a threat yet, could solve these problems. So Apple is looking five, 10 years in the future with the threat of quantum computers and cyber attacks. This new protocol for iMessage called PQ3 is going to keep your iMessages safe even from the attacks from quantum computers. And iOS 17.4 also introduces some new emojis for your iPhone and you can see them on your screen right now. And this update also introduces some changes for those of you who have an iPhone 15 or an iPhone 15 Pro. Inside of settings, if you click on battery, you can see that under battery health, it no longer shows a percent. You can see on my iPhone, it only shows normal. However, when you click on this, you're able to get way more information. So you can see it'll say your battery health is either normal or it'll say limiting performance or something like that. It'll also show your maximum capacity. It'll show your cycle count. It'll also show the manufacturing date of your battery and the first use of your battery. So all this information was available for iPhone 15 users. However, it was hidden inside of settings. So now it makes a lot more sense that this is all in the exact same battery page of settings on your iPhone. And iOS 17.4 also introduces a new toggle for stolen device protection. As you may remember, stolen device protection was introduced with the previous update, iOS 17.3. So inside settings, click on face ID and passcode, and then you wanna scroll down and click on stolen device protection. And you'll see we have a new toggle in here. You can see it's called require security delay. So pretty much when you have stolen device protection turned on, it's going to require a delay of about an hour on your iPhone when you're trying to change a security setting. Now you can have this only when you're away from familiar locations 
or you can choose to have this set to always if you want the maximum security for your iPhone. So I'll quickly show you what this looks like. So if I click on this, you can see it'll scan with Face ID, and then it says security delay required to change stolen device protection. It says the security delay will last one hour and you'll still be able to use your iPhone during this delay. So if you click on start security delay, it'll see your time remaining right here and you can click on done. So then after one hour, I'm now gonna be able to change this setting. And then another really small change inside of 17.4 is for Apple Music. You'll notice that the listen now tab is now called home. And then we also have a pretty cool new feature inside of the App Store, which allows you to see all of your purchase history for your Apple ID. So if you click on your profile picture on the top right, you'll see we have a new option that says purchase history. If you click on this, it'll scan with face ID, and then you can see all of your purchase history in the last 90 days. And iOS 17.4 was apparently going to bring dynamic island support for when you start a stopwatch, but for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to be working on my iPhone. You can see I started the stopwatch, but there's nothing in the island. Uh, here is a screenshot of what it is supposed to look like. I would really like to have this feature as it seems like it would come in handy quite a bit. However, it doesn't seem like it's available on my iPhone for some reason. And then finally, the code for iOS 17.4 suggests that Apple is making progress on their next-gen CarPlay, and we have found eight applications inside of the code. Those applications are Auto Settings, Car Camera, Media, Charge, Closures, Climate, tire pressure, and trips. So it does look like Apple is making headway on their next-gen CarPlay. I think they are behind schedule, but hopefully we should start seeing this next-generation CarPlay in cars at the end of 2024. So that is everything new in iOS 17.4. Let me know your favorite feature in the comments down below. For me, I'd say mine is simply being able to see all of my battery stats right inside of the battery health section. And if Apple would add it to my iPhone, I would love the dynamic island to show my stopwatch. But again, I guess that feature isn't available yet for me. If you guys found this video informative, helpful, entertaining, anything, please drop a like as it does really help us out. With all that said, my name is Michael with IDB. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.